There's a hell of a lot of items in Red Dead Online, and most of them do provide some sort of value, but there's also items that give the impression they are valuable when in actual fact you will never use them or there's a better way to get that exact same item for cheaper. In this video, we will be going through 50 items you must avoid within Red Dead Online. Before getting into the video, if you do want to see any more content from me, I have put together a completely new YouTube channel. Whereas the channel that you're currently watching right now is all about the latest news, the latest information, tutorials on Red Dead Online, the new channel is all about entertainment. We have played a bit of Red Dead, but we're also looking at other games such as GTA and Call of Duty Cold War with there being a variety of other games in the future. If that sounds of any interest to you, there is a link to that in the description down below. Down in the description as well, you can find a link to a similar video that we did to this, whereas this one is 50 items you must avoid, the previous video is 50 the Red Dead Online purchases you must have. And I highly recommend watching that video straight after this video if you haven't already seen it. Getting back into the video, 50 purchases you must avoid. For each one of these items, I'm going to tell you what it is and I'm going to give the reason why you must avoid it. There's also going to be the price coming up on screen for how much you have to pay. For some of these items, considering they do absolutely nothing, they are very, very expensive. First up, we have the pocket watch. This is supposed to provide the benefit of telling you the time, but at any given moment within Red Dead, you could just press down on a D-pad and it tells you at the top of your screen. There is no point buying a pocket watch. Second up, we have binoculars. At no point within Red Dead have I ever seen something at a distance where I've needed the binoculars to show me what it is. Whenever there is something at the distance, you can simply just go over to see it. And it's also the same with the refined binoculars. The refined binoculars can be found under the collector. And the purpose is to show you collectible locations at a distance, and it will show it by glowing. But because of how useful the Jean Robe collector map is, we've never actually needed to look at anything at any distance. We just use the map instead and know the exact location. And number three, we have the advanced camera. This one might be a bit controversial because it's only valuable for those that are into virtual photography. But for the majority of players out there, you are not in which you do get a free camera when you first start Red Dead. So if you do need to do daily challenges to take pictures of other players, maybe NPCs, maybe even take picture of your horse, you could just use the normal camera which is provided when you first start Red Dead. And if you are into virtual photography, then by all means, you could purchase this later on. And number four, we have hair pomade. This item is definitely useful within story mode because it allows you to grow out Arthur and John's hair a lot longer. But within Red Dead, it has no benefit whatsoever. Not to mention that if at some stage within the future, Rockstar do decide to bring in some updates where this item is actually useful, then you can find it in a number of different locations by looting chests or even just looting enemies. So there is no point in which you should be going to pay $1.50 for this item. At number five, you shouldn't be buying any type of meat. This is salted beef, mature venison, prime beef joint, tender pork loin, because all of this can be scavenged by yourself within the open world. You can go to any location within the world of Red Dead and find animals. Kill those animals, skin them, and you will be provided with this meat. So at no point should you be buying it, especially for the extortionate prices that are set within the general store. Moving on to six, seven, eight, and nine. This is potent health cures, potent bitters, potent snake oil, and potent miracle tonics. All of these have different prices going anywhere between $4.50 all the way up to $7. These are very, very expensive just to go and get one bottle of each. Especially you can get these by looting chests, looting enemies, and you can also craft them yourself by going over to the fence and buying the specific pamphlet. The pamphlets can be very expensive, but they do pay for themselves in the long run, as now you never have to pay a penny again to get these different tonics. At number 10, we have any item that requires gold from the barber, and it's different for male and female characters as they have different styles. These cosmetics may make your character look a lot better, but you will be constantly changing them. And it's not the situation where if you bought one of these items for gold, that you can always go back to it at a later date and not have to pay the price. As soon as you pay gold and then go and change that hairstyle, style if you want that original hairstyle again you would have to pay that exact same amount of gold again and this does become a money pit especially when rockstar very sneakily go and put in a daily challenge to update your
your style as a barber, which seems like a very easy challenge to do, but a lot of people do go and buy the gold items to then go and change it to one of the cash items, in which they have just lost out on a lot of gold just to go and get 20 gold nuggets. Very similar to this, we move on to point 11, any emote item that can be bought with gold. There's not as many as what there is hairstyles, but you still have quite a few, such as Coin Bite, Flex, Prospect Jig, Gentle Wave, I'm Hit, Flip Off, You Gonna Cry, and Bring It On. All of these vary in price for the gold required to purchase them, but it is extremely rare for anyone to use emotes. At number 12, we have the camp themes. There are a few different themes that you can buy. You have the Hobo Life, Survivor, Military Surplus, Traveling Opulence, Bounty Hunter, Collector, and Trader. And with this, you start off with Standard, and you can go and buy another one if you really want, but I do recommend that you just limit it to that. You don't need to buy every single one of these. They don't provide any benefit. They just change up the style of your camp. And I've seen a lot of players, including myself, which was a big mistake, by buying every single one of them. But you don't ever need to change them. And you're never at the camp long enough for you to even notice the style that you've selected. Moving on to point number 13 and also point number 14. We're going to start looking at some horses. Now I could have went through the stable and listed as many horses as possible and that would have got this full video done. That would have been 50 plus items. But we want to look at the mistakes that players are making. And this is the novice roll horses. These are horses such as the Criello, Clad Ruba, Norfolk Roaster, Gypsy Cobb and the Breton. Which can all be unlocked at rank 5 within each of the rolls. They cost $150 and players should never be buying them. Point number 14 is the established roll horses. This is the exact same horses again but they have better stats this is the criello clad ruba norfolk rosa gypsy cob and the breton but these ones cost 550 dollars Yet again, you do not want to buy these. And the reason you don't want to buy the novice roll horses or the established roll horses is because you can buy the rank 20 roll horses, which cost $950 each, but they are by far the best horses within the game. Don't waste your money on buying anything less than that. Item 15, we have the horse lantern. It's got a price tag of $350 and all it does is put a light around your horse. There's certainly no benefit there. At point number 16, we have the Aguila Machete. Six gold bars, not really worth it. At no point does anyone use any melee weapons. This brings us on to point 17 and 18. You could also buy the hammer for $75 and also the lance knife for five gold bars. At no point within Red Dead have I ever been killed by any of these weapons. No one really uses them as they don't provide much of a benefit. There's not even any game modes which suit these types of weapons. Moving on to point number 19, we have Sedative Varmint Cartridge Pamphlet. This is used within the Naturalist, but it's just very, very expensive to buy. And when you go and use the crafting item, it doesn't make much of a difference because it is still very expensive to put together. Not to mention that when the Naturalist roll first came out, loads of people went through it and now hardly anyone goes through the roll. Most people just use Harriet for the legendary animal missions so that you can use those legendary animals to fill up their trader and not actually sedate and sample animals across the world. This also means at item 20, the animal reviver pamphlet is also pointless. Unless you're trying to rank up very, very quickly within the naturalist, there's no benefit for you to revive any animals. Therefore, you don't need animal reviver and therefore you definitely do not need the pamphlet. At item 21, we have something which is for specific types to players blend in tonic pamphlet this is a tonic that you can use which will help you get closer to animals and it is perfect for you if you are trying to go for the naturalist and you are trying to take pictures of animals it's not essential but just makes life easier but for 99 percent of players they do not care about this they do not care about completing the animal field book because there is no reward at the end of it. And finally, within the naturalist, we have the legendary animal pheromone pamphlet at item 22. Legendary animal pheromones are supposed to help animals spawn in and also it shows the exact location. Unfortunately, we've done tests here on the channel to see how many you would need. And I've thrown hundreds within specific animal locations and not had an animal spawn in. So this is just not worth using. At 23, we have the track and arrow pamphlet. At no point ever have I ever used the track and arrow. Going through the bounty board to collect bounties are extremely easy and it does show them on the mini map. You don't really need the track and arrow to see where they're going because you know exactly where they're going. At 24, we have the rank 20 plus bolas. This is your Hawk Moth, the Brookstone, and also the Gravesend. All of these have a very expensive price tag and they don't do anything different to the original that you were able to get at a much lower rank still does the exact same thing and it's got the exact same time for them to break free. There's no point wasting money on these items, especially considering you can lose them and never retrieve them again. 
At 25, we have the bounty wagon liveries that can be bought with gold. Very similar to what we mentioned earlier about buying items from the barber for gold. If you buy them and then decide to change them later on, you don't keep the original one that you bought for gold. You would have to buy it again. As long as there's a livery that you know you're going to keep forever, by all means, buy it. But the chances are you're not going to. So don't waste any of your gold and save it for something much more useful. At 26, we have the Moonshine Bar photos. With Outlaw Pass 4, we did get some free photos. And by all means, use those. Because the other ones do cost bunny and they're just not worth it. It's such a small thing within your Moonshine Shack that you're never ever going to notice it. At 27, we have Crib's outfit. There's options for you to customize your Cribs by changing his outfit. All of these outfits can be very, very expensive, either being bought with cash or gold, and they do not make any difference whatsoever. It doesn't now mean that Cribs will be able to craft goods any quicker still the exact same time. It makes no difference whatsoever. Very similar to this is item 28, the camp flags. You can get some of these flags for free, by all means, go and take them, especially the ones from Outlaw Passes because they are free and they're so much better. But there is the option for you to go and pay for camp flags and these are just colors. For such a small detail within your camp that you're never ever going to notice, it is pointless for you to use your money to buy them, save that money and use it for something more useful. Now we're going to be moving over to some of the pamphlets that you can get at the fence. This is going from item 29 all the way to item 37. This is your horse ointment pamphlet, special horse medicine pamphlet, horse mill pamphlet, poison arrow pamphlet, poison throwing knife pamphlet, potent herbivore bait pamphlet, Potent Predator Bait Pamphlet, Volatile Dynamite Pamphlet, and Volatile Fire Bottle Pamphlet. All of these provide the benefits so that you can craft these items at your camp, but none of these items are ever really used. For the items that are used, you can very easily loot them from chests, loot them from enemies, or craft something very similar. The Volatile Fire Bottle Pamphlet doesn't need to be volatile, you can just craft a normal fire bottle. Moving on to item 38, we have the Robe Gun Bell. There's a lot of gun belts that you can choose, but weirdly enough, this one is by far one of the worst, and on top of that, it requires one gold bar. Instead of getting this one, just go and buy one of the better ones and buy it for cash. Also partnered up for this is item 39, the Rope Gun Holster. I do recommend buying a second holster within the game because it means you can also buy a second weapon, and this is when you can start dual wielding weapons. But definitely do not go and buy the Rope Gun Holster because this also costs one gold bar and it is by far the worst looking. Next up we have item 40 and this is all the different collector maps that you can buy from Madame Nazar. This is such as the Arrowhead, Bird Eggs, Antique Alcohol Bottles, Coins, Family Heirlooms, Lost Jewelry, Tarot Cards, American Wildflowers, Miscellaneous and Fossils. All of these are just a waste of money. Instead of using these, just go into the description down below, find the Sean Rope collector map and this will show you every single collector location every single day. This is now saving you money so you don't have to buy these collector maps and you can just use the free Jean Rogue collector map which shows you every collector location. This can also be used from the next point for Madame Lazar and this is herbs. You have got the option to buy herbs from Madame Lazar at her shop but do not do it. The collector map on top of showing collector locations also shows every single herb location. So whereas Madame Lazar is charging $1 for every single herb, just go to the location and pick it yourself for free. At 42, Madame Lazar is also trying to sell you moonshine. Do not buy it. It costs $2.25, but you can very easily loot this from chests and loot this from enemies. It actually pops up more often than not. On every single Red Dead account that I've created and played through, I've never ever had to buy Moonshine. And this is just because I loot every single enemy that I kill. And this always leads to me being completely stacked in this area. At 43, Madame Mazar is also trying to sell you Flight Feathers. These cost a very, very small price of 50 cents. Doesn't seem like much. But flight feathers are by far one of the easiest animal parts for you to get. You can kill any bird within the game and it will give you a couple flight feathers. This is extremely easy. At 44, we have belt buckles. Belt buckles can be bought, but the most often way for you to get them is by completing awards. Now the ones that can be bought and the ones that are part of awards are completely different. They're not the same. But the belt buckle is such a small detail that no one's ever going to notice. So by paying the great old price of $200 for a belt buckle or even pushing for six gold bars just for getting one buckle, it's just not worth it. No one is ever going to notice it. 
you probably won't even notice it yourself. And it's also going to be the same for item 45 going to 47. This is the toe bar knuckles, which costs 12 gold bars, the black bone ring, which is five gold bars, and the raw back ring, which is four gold bars. These are such small details, which you can apply to your character, but they are very expensive. And yet again, no one, including yourself, is even going to notice it. Moving on to item 48, there is actually a weight gain tonic within the game. Many players skip over this, but there are some very in-depth stats within the game. One of them is weight. And if you're overweight or underweight, this will affect your cause. And Rockstar are helping you out by providing you a weight gain tonic, which is $75. Or you can also get a potent weight gain tonic, which is $150. There is no need to go and buy this. You can very easily go and scavenge food by killing animals, by collecting herbs, and you can craft it yourself. You eat that food, keep on doing it, and you will gain weight eventually. You don't need to go and buy the tonics because there's nothing you need to unlock specifically for your weight apart from the cores. This is also the same for item 49, because item 49 is the weight loss tonic, which is also $75, or you can buy the potent weight loss tonic, which is $150. With this one, it is as simple as not eating within the game. And even if you were to go and buy any of these tonics just to get the perfect weight, it's not going to be making that much of a difference to your cause, because if someone still gets a headshot, you're still dying. These tonics are completely pointless. Save your money and use it for something else. And finally, this brings us to item 50. And this is any of the vitalism studies. These cost 10 gold bars each, and it gives you the option to collect Haritum Officinalis, go to a certain location within the world, and transform into a specific animal. You can change into a boar, a possum, rabbit, and also a buck. It sounds pretty cool and hopefully Rockstar at a later date does come back to this and bring some more stuff just for these specific mechanics but as of right now you're paying 10 gold bars to change into an animal with there actually nothing to do. You end up being stuck within a specific location and you can't do anything apart from just running around. You can get the first one for free when talking to Harriet so you can go and try that out and just take that one but the other ones which cost 10 gold bars each are not worth it. Instead of putting 30 gold bars into the vitalism studies, you can use that gold to go and buy it into some of the rolls, or you can even save it and then try and get a bit more gold to go into the outlaw passes. This is so much better. But anyway, that is 50 items in which you should avoid within Red Dead. In fact, it's probably a lot more than 50. We did go and break down each of these different areas into other items. We could very well be pushing into over 100 individual items if we break down all the different liveries, all the different hairstyles, which I told you to avoid. By avoiding these items, you are better off keeping your money, keeping your gold, and using that for other content. Maybe even save them for the 50 items that you must have within Red Dead, which was the previous video we did. If you do want to see that, there will be a link in the description down below, as well as there'll be a card on screen right now, which will take you to that video. I do highly recommend it. By merging them both together, you avoid purchasing the items that are pointless, and you put it into something that's going to make you more money, or provide you a better experience. But anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see ya.